got a friend by the comical name of Doodoo. Doodoo means beaver, that's how he looks, my friend. And with a mixture of science, good luck, and voodoo, he has seen the world from end to end. Handsome or flashy is one thing that doo-doo isn't He'll never set any records for style or speed But wind jobs are tough Or dark dangers lurk Then he'll show you just how well his systems work And he runs and he runs and he runs and he runs and he runs, and he runs. And he runs and he runs and he runs and he runs and he runs. Hello, this is Dudu on frequency number 926. Dudu on 926, over. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Jimmy. Daddy, you? Yes, Jimmy Bondy here. Have I got the pleasure of speaking to the star of the Hell Drivers, Aldo Regazzani? Jimmy, old devil, how are you? Everything's just fine here. How are you and the boys in the business doing? Well, not too good. We miss you and the beetle and that act you had with the clown. How about those broken bones, huh? Well, they removed the plaster from my legs about a week ago, and my ribs are practically like new. Where are you now? We're appearing in a Liverpool. Hey, am I seeing things at those snow-capped mountains behind you? Yes, we're on the Pies Corvatsch in Switzerland. We're over 7,500 feet high. Well, now, don't go falling into no crevasse. So you're hitting the heights again with your beetle, huh? Well, now, when are you going to join us? Well, when do you want me to get there? When do there? I want you to get here? Yesterday. <laughs> okay, I'm coming. You know, Dudu, it's quite a long way to Liverpool. We'll take turns, friend. You take over now till we get to the valley, okay? Oh, and remember, don't drive too fast.
ladies and gentlemen, we now present another smashing experience. You yourself have seen that our unique presentation has consisted of one unbelievable experience after another. Ladies and gentlemen, and now we come to the culminating point of the Hell Drivers show, Aldo Regazzoni, our star. Aldo will now show you something rarely ever attempted, the Kamikaze Fire Crash. The Kamikaze Fire Crash demands courage, ability, and a bit of luck. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I will ask you to help by being absolutely still and to concentrate. Well, Aldo Regazzoni certainly has courage and plenty of ability. So let's all keep our fingers crossed for the little bit of luck he needs. And now, clear the tracks. Aldo's all right. He was severely burned on several occasions during his daring ride. But no, he made it all right. And now a bravo for Aldo Regazzoni. <laughs> and now we offer 1,000 pounds to anyone who will attempt this crash. Ah, but I don't think we'll find anyone amongst us who will, like Aldo Regazzoni, repeat the Kamikaze Fire Crash. Oh, yes, me. If you don't mind, sir. You mean, you want to try the Kamikaze Fire Crash? Quite right. Do you mind if I ask who you are? Hmm. Oh, you're the greatest. Quite right. And, uh, what's your name? You mean you don't know? Haven't you ever heard of James Bond? Don't tell me, you're James Bond. No, I'm just his little brother. I'm Jimmy Bondy. Oh, Mr. Bondy, I'm afraid that's impossible. All the cars have been smashed. In which case, I'll use my own. And where is your car? There's no one in the car. Oh, it's Dudu, my friend. No, I won't let you. It's too dangerous, Mr. Bondi. You'll break your neck. Don't worry. Dudu will make it all right. Uh, John, uh, Bill had Pettip with something in his way, eh? OK. Go ahead and drive, mister, if you can. You really shouldn't have wasted all this time. <laughs> Your friend can start counting the money, but only short notes, please. Yes? Well, what do you want? Mr. Leskovich, there's somebody with a bill out there. Who can that be? We paid everything. He said it was private. Private? Well, I'll tell him to wait. But Mr. Leskovich, he's been I waiting for I said he will have hour. to wait. for the landing. Going down. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, Dudu! Wait, Dudu! Take me with you! Good morning, gentlemen. Mulder is my name. Fred Mulder from the firm Spencer & Co. I'm looking for a certain Leskovich. We're looking for him, too. Does he owe you money? Yes, our invoice for the transportation of an old-timer. A valuable old car still hasn't been paid. And where is the old-timer? I don't know. The car was shipped to London uh, by our company. Then why not find out if the car is still hanging around in London? That's exactly what I'm doing. We're just a waste of time. We should find out where Leskovich is hiding out. If we can find the car, we can find him. Hello, London. One moment, please. Ask him if they still have the car. This is Mulder speaking from Spencer & Co. Four days ago, an old-timer was forwarded to you by our shippers. Waybill number... Uh, mm, uh, Waybill number 609-2841. stroke Yes, an old-timer. Have you still got the car? Just a minute, I'll check. Yes, it's still here. That's to say the car itself was taken out yesterday, but the car papers are still here. A certain Mr. Leskovitz said it'd be in tomorrow morning to pick them up personally. Do you want... Cut off. Do you want me to? No, no need to. If I leave immediately, I can be in London in the early hours. You mean if we leave? Robert, can you go on without us? I'll have to go back to the old program. You planning to drive in the Beetle? Yes, why'd you ask? You'd be better off taking one of our cars. You'd be there sooner. Don't worry. Dude will make it all right. Tomorrow or the day after, we'll be back with the money. Huh? Mm -hmm. Ciao. Ciao. Don't break your neck. Have you got a fare? Yes, I've got a customer for the airport. I'm sure that's a Leskovich. He must be in there. Come on. Quick, drive on. If you make the plane for Zurich, I'll pay you double the fare. Hey, Jimmy, hurry. He's driving away. Don't worry, we'll catch him. We've run out of gas, I'm afraid. We'll have to refuel. To refuel? Well, what? Do you got any money left? No. You? Ah. And how are we going to get to the airport? The garage owner say Leskovich will want to get away to Switzerland, huh? We'll get to the airport. Maybe not so fast, but we'll get there. And how are you going to drive with no gas, huh? With this key here. I just have to wind up the car. Hmm. Huh? That's a clock key. You mean it'll make a beetle go? Mm-hmm. Don't worry, Doodle will make it all right.
What's going on now? What are we slowing it down for? At this horrendous speed, we'll get to the airport for Christmas. <laughs> Give your hat off. You're wearing the hat. Listen, the plane to Zurich leaves in three minutes. With Leskovich aboard. That means a goodbye money. You realize that once he sold the car, we'll never see the money again. This is just what we need. Not a car stopped all together. Uh, uh, just have to wind it up, that's all. Better than having to push. Maybe your watch is fast. No, my watch is she never fast. Hurry up, can you? Okay. Okay. And off we go. Clockwork yellow, full speed ahead. He make it all right. Do you have a driving license? Look at Look my at car. Look at you standing in the middle of the road like that in your car. Jimmy, you bring it again. Look where were you looking? Ruined. Hey, Jimmy, we got it a maid. A petrol is running out of the car. Do you think we might have bought us one? Huh? You all right? You must have won your license in a lottery. Oh, doing your driving license. You'll have to pay for the repairs. I'll assure you of that. I won't pay a penny. You can depend on that. Excuse out of my way. Excuse me, please. I just. Excuse me, isn't it pretty for What are you talking about? Oh, the petrol. Well, you mind if I have it all? Yeah. Throw the car Thank away. You very much. Did you say throw my car away? It's your car that needs throwing away. I'm with it, the driver. And the further the better. Why, you're a public man. That's what you, what you are. Hmm. Well, uh, we made it to Dover. Huh? Now, how are we going to make it at the Zurich, eh? Over there is Cali. Yeah? And how you like to go? Maybe you want to drive it in. That's quite a good idea. We got enough petrol. Huh? What do you mean we got enough for petrol? We're going to swim over the channel. What do you say? You mean you're going to swim over the channel with your beetle? Sure, why not? Oh, but not over to me, you want my friend. I can't swim. Oh, well. Of course, you could go back, if you want to give up so quickly. Mm. <laughs> they don't got no road signs here. How you know we're going right away? Look, the sun's going down back there. That's west, and that out there is east. Europe lies to the east, so all we have to do is drive straight on. Very easy. Thank you, Mr. Columbus. And what do you do if she's covered by the clouds? Listen, Dudu and I once drove to the center of the Sahara Desert. No roads there either, but we always got there in the end. Always to your destination. Well, practically. Oh, hold me. Criticize your doodle, but he's a bit weak on navigation, don't you think? Didn't you want to get to Calais? Well, where do you think you are now? In Elizabeth. Lisbon? Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering what the Statue of Columbus was doing in Calais Harbor. Don't you realize that we're further than ever right now? That's true. And you just sit there, sure. and we're running out of the petrol. How are we going to get to Zurich? With the key. But we want to get there before the snow blocks the roads. Well, we'll have to hitch a ride. Did you say hitch a ride? For sure. You don't make it all. Oh. He's got a Zurich number. Quick, just what we need. And you want to hitch on to him while we're driving? Right. Tell me, you got to drive us so close? Don't worry, Doodle will make it all I right. I hope so.
There, now we can save petrol. You really think of a rubber plunge, you're strong enough at the hose, huh? Well, there was that time in the Sahara Desert. I know, you attached yourself and it held all the way, huh? Have you any idea how we find Leskovich once we're in Zurich? There are a lot of old-timer clubs in Switzerland. Could be Leskovich is well known there. Old-timer clubs? Is that all you can come up with? Hey, what about the wheel? Doodle will manage all right. How about yeah. getting some rest, too? Doodle manage all right. I just drove over the St. Gotthard Pass, so I was sure I wouldn't have any trouble getting over the Julia Pass. I just got brand new tires, all four of them. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. It must the have been a nail. The front all right. Good thing the club has got its own service car, I must say. When was the last time you changed your tires? Your wheel is very rusty. <coughs> Old timers. You want to ask them if it happened in Oleskovich? Why not? There's no time like the present, mm -hmm. so let's go and ask. Leskovich? Isn't that the man who tried to sell Stützli the old-timer Rolls Royce? Uh, is he one of your group? No, no, he's not with us this time. And Mr. Stutzley, is he mm. going to Sam Moritz? Oh, yes, he should be on the Julia Pass by now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Thank you very much. <laughs> and a good luck with the race. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, what car did you say Mr. Stutzley's got? Uh, he drives a... Uh, a black Rolls Royce, model 1936. Rolls Royce, 36. Uh, thank you very much. Not at all. Goodbye. <sighs> Well, we can save ourselves a trip to Zurich. Right, we'll go to San Moritz. In three hours, we'll be on the Julia Pass. Samaritz is to the left. There's an old timer there. Why don't we follow him? Maybe it'll lead us to this Mr. Stutzler. Maybe they're making the trip via seals. Guess we could try it. Excuse me, uh, do you belong to this old time as a group? Yes. Do you happen to know Mr. Stutzli? Stutzli? Isn't that the chap with the Rolls Royce? Yeah. Is mm -hmm. he here? He should be in St. Moritz by now, in the Eurotel. Our hotel? No, Eurotel. That's oh, where the yeah. Old Timer Congress is taking place. That's right. Well, thank you. Not at all. Thank, thank you. you. Nice to see you again, Mr. Stutzli. How are you, sir? Very well, thank you. Welcome to your return, Mr. Thank Stutzley. You. I hope thank you had a you good Mr. trip. Uh, yes, thank you. It was all right. Uh, certain Mr. Laskowitz is waiting inside for you. Mr. Stutzley, may I introduce to you my secretary, Miss Gloria Bingermeyer. And this is Mr. Stutzley. Oh, delighted, Miss Bingermeyer. How do you do, Mr. Stutzley? Miss Bingermeyer used to be a dancer. Oh, you don't say, a dancer? Yes. Oh, I have one of those at home. She poses, she poses like this. Uh, no, that's not true. Uh, like, like this. <laughs> Late 17th century. Oh, that must be Baroque. Yes, quite true, dear lady. <laughs> You're a connoisseur of antiquities. Not really, but I'm fond of old things. I'm delighted to hear. Uh, maybe we can develop the subject a little further later on. How <laughs> thrilling. And when can I have a look at the car? 
I was planning to leave at once so I could make arrangements to show you the car tomorrow morning. Good. If there's anything you'd like to know about the car, any questions, uh, Miss Gloria has all the information. You mean Miss Gloria is going to stay here all alone? I don't know exactly if... Yeah, well, maybe Mr. Strissley would like to have a secretary here during the Congress. Uh, in which case, you might be able to bring Miss Gloria with you tomorrow morning to Bern. Why, nothing would render me more pleasure. When did you say you were leaving? This very minute. I was only waiting for you. My car is parked outside. Yes, where is he? I'm sorry, but Mr. Leskovich has already left the hotel. And has Mr. Stutzley arrived? He's in the main lobby, I'd say. The members of the Old Timer Congress are just beginning to come in. I see, thank you. Welcome. And what are we going to do now? We'll have to find out where Leskovich is hiding through this Mr. Stutzley. You think it is Mr. Stutzley he should stay here overnight, huh? I believe so. I think we should stay overnight at two. Here? You mean in this hotel? You can sleep in a car as far as I'm concerned, but me, I'm going to stay here. Just a minute. We're completely broke, remember? Making sure no one comes in here while I'm on the phone, huh? Why? What are you planning? I'm ordering our rooms. Hello? Yeah, this is the head office in Thun. I'd like to speak to the manager, Mr. Novak, in person. Here you are, Mr. Novak. Thank you. Novak speaking. Ah, the head office. What can I do for you? My name is Berkeley, from the head office in Thun. I'm calling you on behalf of Director Wertley. Yeah, that's right. The director sends his compliments and would like to tell you that two very important guests are coming to your hotel. They're from the press, and they represent the largest tourist agency in the United States. It would be a very good idea to invite them, but it should be done discreetly, as they want to remain incognito. You can depend on me. The gentleman will get VIP treatment. Mrs. Stutzley told me the old timer was in a garage in Bern. I also have the address. What did you find out about Leskovich? Stutzley's going to meet Leskovich in the garage at the moment. And if the old timer is it to his liking, he buys it right away. <laughs> you do all right as a private detective. <laughs> Look out, the manager. Good evening. Everything to your satisfaction? Oh, yes, thank you. Good evening. Everything to your satisfaction? Good evening. Uh, compliments to the chef. The dinner was excellent. That's very kind of you. I hope you'll stay a few days. Unfortunately, we have to leave tomorrow. Oh, dear. But maybe we can have a little chat with the manager after dinner at the bar. Why, certainly, of course. It'll be a pleasure. Papa? Papa? Do I really have to go to bed already? Alexander, first say good evening to the two gentlemen. Papa, are those the two press clowns? These gentlemen are not from the press. Besides, how are you behaving? Oh, but only a minute ago you told Mummy you had to leave us because you had to deal with the press clowns, remember? See you at the bar, gentlemen. Come on up. <laughs> well, let's drink to Mr. Novak and then we find the old timer in the garage. You know you're a much better driver than Mr. Leskovich. Oh, I used to be a racing driver. That's to say, I wanted to be one. Racing driver? Oh, I also like anything that's fast. <laughs> oh, is that so? <laughs> well, I... Huh? Wasn't that Leskovich's friend? That little beetle is quite fast too, isn't it? Mm, you just wait and see what I'm going to do with him. <laughs> well, if it isn't Mr. Stutzler, the old-timer millionaire. Seems he can't wait to get you. <laughs> so we'll let him pass if he wants. It's a bit of luck that he's behind us now. We would have to swallow a lot of dust. Then the beetle's much smaller. He won't have to pay as much as I have to have it washed. If we lose a him or we lose a Leskovich. Hey, can you still see in this a duster? I can't. But Dudu can, through the thickest fog. Hey, you mean you use a TV camera and a screen? Right. And with its X-ray eye, it transmits a clear picture. In fog, dust, and even when it's dark. All the same, but do you happen to drive it a fast? What happens if he breaks? Don't worry, Dudu will make it. Hey, we can't lose him now, and he can break all he wants.
Well, I keep my fingers crossed. Our old time is making a good time, eh? How about a little bit of fun, eh? It's the Beatles who's still behind us, and now he wants to pass us, too. Did he say pass us? He must be crazy. But, well, I'll show him what a real car can do now. What's that smell? I think of the clutch she's beginning to smoke. Mm. Making me nervous, driving so close behind. The impertinent. You wait until we get to the summit. I'll show you, my friends. Hey, look out, I think he's a pull to the right. Yes, so are we. I wonder what he got to say for himself. Buggy must be warm. Look out, here he comes. <clears throat> now, you just listen to me, my friend. I know all about the advantages of tailgating, but if there are only three feet between the two of you, then there's bound to be a crash if the man in front breaks. You mean you put on the brakes? You wanted us to crash? Oh, no, I always drive safely. Uh, but tell me, uh, do you have a radar anti-collision safety system built in? Tell you what, we'll wait for you at the next petrol station. We can talk about it there. You think you'll get to the petrol station before me? By the look of things just now, we hold a pretty good chance. I'll bet your radar system against 10,000 francs that I'll be there before you. Huh? 10,000 francs? Uh-huh. Well, all right, if you insist. Um, I tell you what, you even win the bet if we get there at the same time. When I blow the horn, you go. Next, uh, I mean, do we have to go down a hill vertically? It's worth 10,000 francs. Don't forget, we need every penny. <laughs> Step on it, trains are coming. It's against the law what he's doing, driving over meadows and virgin grass. He shall be fined for it. My glasses are being all steamed up. Oh, dear. I'm afraid this time, Mr. Stritzley, we are being covered by dust. Oh, well, I can't see my way out of this one. And what do we do now under the asphalt road ahead? We don't stand a chance. Don't no worry. Doodle will make it all right. Sure, do. Hey, Jimmy, what are you doing, eh? Mr. Stutzley's gonna give us a ride. Mr. Stutzley, I don't know about you, but I can't see a thing. I must admit I'm not much better. I've never seen so much hail in my life in the middle of the summer. He's all right to below us now. Okay, then I'll lower the suction pad. Jimmy, are you sure the hell are over? That was that time in the Sahara when I landed oh. on that sheik's roof and, uh... Did you see that, Chippy? Crazy camper carrying a reserve car on his roof. Look, there's the first petrol station. We're the first. He hasn't arrived yet. Of course, what you expect. <laughs> he isn't anywhere close. <sighs> you 
morning, sir. You want petrol? Uh, fill it up, please. Very good, sir. And for the car up there as well? For who? For him up in there. No, thank you. <laughs> Very good, we hardly sir. used any at all. <gasps> I wonder if we could have an advance on the 10,000 francs. We got here at the same time, Mr. Stutzley. Uh, now I'll have to have the car washed. Good morning, gentlemen. I presume you want to refuel? Yes, please. Fill her up, will you? Just a moment now, I'll do it myself. Mm. Be careful. Don't touch. Do that again and the gear rim will break. Well, what's the idea of frightening me? Can't you come in like a normal person? It's enough to give you a nervous breakdown. What's a normal person do? You could say, good morning, or hello, or you who it's me. Suppose I could. Hmm. Do you happen to know anything about cars? Could be. Well, that's no answer to my question, yes or no. Yes. About old timers, too? Old timers as well. Good. Then I suppose you know all about this car. Make, model, when it was built. Rolls Royce, uh, Phantom One, built in 1927. Hmm. Hey, Joe! Mr. Genius here says he knows all about cars. Hmm. We're in luck. Now we've got two geniuses. You fooled me for a minute. You won't believe this, but I thought you were a woman at first. I am a woman. You're not a woman. I am. <laughs> are you looking for work? Hmm? You can start right away if you are. Well, I'd have to talk to the boss about our wages first. Listen, I'm boss here. You get paid for the work done. You mean you're running this place? It's a free country. You got nothing but women in this garage? No men? No, we got rid of them. Couldn't keep up with us. Okay, make your minds up. Sorry, I don't work for How about women. you? You just hired yourself a couple of men. Listen, Jimmy, I never worked for no woman before. If you need some overalls or anything, you can have mine. Ah, thanks very much. But we've got all we need in the car outside. I'll go and get them. No, you needn't go. Dudu will make it all right. You don't mean... You got another man. <laughs> There's a third one. Name's Dudu. Now we're all present. Maybe we can begin work. Oh, Jimmy, I'll be back in a minute. Typical. Already trying to get around working. Listen, Dracula Junior, I haven't eaten since lunchtime and I'm a hungry. Give him something to eat, Jack. And suppose Dr. Frankenstein doesn't eat what I cook. I think I'd go with you into the kitchen and make sure you don't feed us none of your dirty clothes. Hmm. You better not call me Dr. Frankenstein again or I'll... <laughs> you oh, little I monster! I got a beetle. You think you could fix her up to do those tricks too? I don't see why not. All that has to be done is written on there. We must have that car finished by tomorrow morning at the latest. Maybe you could begin without me. I'll be back right away. Aldo, take a good look. That's your new boss. <laughs> Just the what I needed, eh? 
Hmm. How do you like that? The rubber gloves. A garage run by a woman and a young girl. No, I want to work you here. Do you know whose car this is? Hmm. Leskovich. Leskovich? Well, what do you know? Well, at least we've got his car as security. That's the point. This car has to be ready by tomorrow morning. What's that got to do with us? So why do we have to do it? Well, first, uh, we can sell this car to this Mr. Stutzley ourselves tomorrow morning. Hmm. And secondly, you're getting first-hand experience of what it's like being a garage owner. Well, what are you waiting for? All right, you twisted my arm. You'll have the car tomorrow morning. You can rest assured, Mr. Leskovich, the car is as good as new. Yes, tomorrow morning. Bye. You must eat something before you start work. Jack, you must eat something too. In a minute. You've been saying that all day long. Hmm, that's really tasty. That's lubricant on your bread. Careful. Hmm, I'm sure anything's possible. Aren't you eating anything? I've already had my dinner. Thanks. You can remove the light now. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the rear axle fixed. It's already two o'clock. How time flies. If you could deal with the shock absorbers and the wheel bearings, I could start with the lacquering in the meantime. What color is it going to be? Midnight blue. Hmm. Start the engine. I said start. Shh! Don't make so much noise. What's the matter with you? The kid's just fallen asleep. I'll put her to bed. A child like that should have been in bed a long time ago. Jack. Jack. Jacqueline. Oh. oh, I fell asleep, I'm afraid. Sorry, Joe, don't be mad. It's all right. Come on, then, off to bed. Hello, Chief. Come along. But I have to help you. Don't worry about that now. You just lie down for a couple of hours and then you can come back and help us again. I don't need any sleep. I didn't go to sleep yesterday either. No, you didn't go to sleep yesterday either. Not a single minute. Not a single second. Not a single second. Find your way up alone? Yes. Don't forget to wait. I me. won't forget. Good night, Chief. Good night and a sweet dream. Thanks. I'll do my best. You worked all night yesterday as well? Yes, why? You're gonna sleep too now. Just a minute, are you trying to tell me what I have to do? Mm -hmm. You're gonna take off your clothes and go to bed. Or do you want me to take off your clothes and put you to bed? Don't you dare do that. Oh, very well. When you finish with the work, don't forget to turn the lights out. Your rooms are in the corridor to the left. Good night. Good night. You know what I think? The little girl's just putting on a big show with all her gruff manners. <laughs> it's about time you noticed. Mm. But how come it do it? Don't talk so much and get on with your work. Mm. Tomorrow we're meeting our friend Leskovich and we'll have to be on our toes. I can't wait to find out if she's still going to be dirty tomorrow morning. <laughs> Well, Mr. Stursley, did I promise you too much? I must admit it's a collector's item. 
A unique piece? No doubt about it? I can assure you the exhaust gases are in compliance with the strictest requirements demanded by the anti-pollution laws. But how extraordinary. Well, how about it? Wouldn't you like to have a trial run? I'd be delighted. It always gives me a special thrill to step into one of these miraculous technical achievements of the past century. And to awaken it to new life once again. I don't consider this at all funny. I have a weak heart, you must understand. This is not the car for me. Are you trying to say that you don't want to buy this car anymore? I won't buy a devil's vehicle. I'll have nothing but trouble with the authorities. I've been a perfect member of society until now. But we'd already made an agreement. Or are you trying to back out of the deal? <sighs> Mr. Leskovich, if that's your opinion of me, then I'm wasting my time here. Good day. Oh, but Mr. Stutzley, just no, a moment. No, 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 no. What are you doing just standing there? Get him back at once. How do you want me to do that? How shall I know? Think of something. You're a woman, aren't you? I've just thought of something, Mr. Leskowitz. Well? I'm quitting. I want an explanation, and it had better be good. I don't know. I just can't explain it. I'm holding you responsible for it. I'll impound the garage. I'll call the police. Call the police? A very good idea. What do you say, Jim? I think our friend would much prefer an ambulance at this time. Mm -hmm. Hmm? I think he arrived. Just a minute, fellas. Just a second. Let me explain. You should have done that before running off with our money. Hmm? Gentlemen, I believe you owe me an explanation before anyone else. Good morning, Mr. Stitzley. Good morning, Miss Bingham. Mr. Stitzley, I must talk to you. Uh, won't you come in, please? Thank you. Uh, did Mr. Leskovich uh, send you by chance? No, no, he didn't. I quit my job. Oh, you don't say. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I mean, then you haven't got a job. That's right. Oh, but won't you come in, Miss Bingham, Maya? It's much nicer than you said it was. Oh, yes, it's very nice, but I'm afraid <clears throat> it's a little bit untidy. Is the castle also open to visitors? Well, the place has to pay for itself. And one should do something for people's culture, don't you think? <clears throat> but, of course, there's something missing. A woman's touch. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's the business of the ticket sales, for example. It can't be just entrusted to anyone. If you're looking for a secretary, Mr. Stutzley, well, I could be your cashier. Oh, that would be... No, of course, then there would be other things you could uh, look after. I would do my best, of course. Miss Bingermeyer, wouldn't it be better if you were to marry? You want me to marry you? Oh, but... Of course, it's only a suggestion. That's to say, if you have no uh, objections. <clears throat> because uh, in this way, I thought we, we could save ourselves the secretary's... Wages? Mr. Stitzler, you're a genius. Call me Hugo. Hugo. Ah! Uh, what did I do? The beetle. That's why I came in the first place. You wanted to buy the flying beetle, don't you remember? Oh, I am a silly Billy. I forgot all about it. You see, you must marry me at once. Yes, I need a new head on my shoulders. Yes, 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 I'd nearly forgotten all about it. You really want to buy the beetle? Why, yes, certainly I do. Do you realize how much petrol we can save when we drive on the rooftop of somebody else's car, Miss Bingermeyer? In other words, the car doesn't even belong to you, Mr. Leskovich. You're absolutely right. He bought the car with our money. Listen, boys, you can have your money right away. Stop talking about the money. Let's see it. But I don't carry such large sums on me. We'll go with you to the bank. Oh, Mr. Stutzley, you're paying us a visit. Not paying you a visit, Mr. Leskovich. Mr. Bondy, your beetle, I want to purchase it. I'm afraid my beetle isn't up for sale, Mr. Stutzley. Not even if I pay you 50,000 francs for it? 50,000 francs? How about the old timer, Mr. Stutzley? We guarantee it's in a perfect condition. I don't understand. Does it belong to you too? 
A ono le to vas? Mr. Leskovic, is that true? Uh, well, the gentlemen are my partners. Well, then, I will buy it. And with regard to the beetle, I'll tell you tomorrow. Uh, but you'll give me priority, eh? Uh, we'll leave the price open for the time being. <laughs> okay, Mr. Stutzley. Well, till tomorrow, then. And goodbye to you, Mr. Leskovic. And now to you, partner. You got a some nerve to call us a partner. Now listen, boys. How about a little talk? A very good suggestion. I think it would be better if you left us alone. Now, before you go any further, I want to get one thing clear. No fighting in my house or office. How about outside in the garage? There's lots of room there. Go on. Well, I hope they give him a real good beating. He certainly deserves it. Mm -hmm. Listen, fellas, I could get a hundred thousand francs out of Stussley for the Beetle, but you'd have to sell it to me first. Sell it to you, and you'd pay us one hundred thousand francs? Y yes, I'm sure I could get that much out of Stussley. If he sell a hundred thousand, he's going to get a hundred and fifty for sure. Any deal he make is a crook. I'll have you change your ways. Very well, I'll sell you the Beetle for one hundred thousand. But only on the condition that you pay it once. And if you should try any of your tricks... Agreed. I'll pay you 100,000 francs at once. Hmm. All right. You can have the car tomorrow. The boys in London are also waiting for the money. I'll see to it that it's forwarded. We'll transfer the money. And now we'll drive to the bank. Right away? Right. Right away. The two of us. Oh, that business deal with the Beetle. We're going to do that together? As soon as the money's been transferred to London. Okay, it's a deal. I'll go ahead. Okay, I'll look for a parking spot. Policeman, you run out of squad cars. Can I drive you any place? You never heard of air pollution? No, uh, taxi. Uh, are you free? I was a free man before the police came along. Oh, uh, constable, uh, I must get to the hospital. Uh, quick, uh, my wife's having a baby, maybe even two. Well, all right, I'll let you go this time, but next time we get a ticket. <laughs> let's get out of here. A smooth job. We got the brain. Okay, let's split. <laughs> Damn, what the cop is that we've had it? Tell him to switch off his horn. Hey, Peach Face, what's the big deal? Don't stand there, man. Turn Move off your horn at once. Hurry up, man. Move you behind. Look out. Here comes the cop. Pretend nothing's happened. Can I see your papers, please? Keep him busy while I grab the beetle. Take the cash with you. We'll use the smoke bomb. Okay. Right away, Chief. Sir. <coughs> this is really terrible. What happens? <coughs> Looks like somebody robbed a bank. Robbery? I hope they got the robbers and the money too. Uh, no. Goodness, where did they hide the money then? It's okay, it's in the beetle. We'll have to get that beetle, Max, and the money. What's going on? I don't get it. Don't tell me you've got trouble breaking into a beetle. A beetle that beat me never happened before. Listen, hmm? a couple of men are fiddling around with your car. Another Leskovich gun job, huh? I know them. They're a couple of bank robbers. Bank robbers? Just what I've been waiting for. 
wait a minute. Doodle will make it all right. <laughs> there, I made it. And about time. We'll take the car, too. There seems to be something special about it. It's got a real fancy dashboard, Chief. Oh, and here's the bag with our money. Oh, sure lucky no one found it yet. Ready. <laughs> we must try and get away as soon as possible. And they thought they fooled us. Ah. I told you to hurry up. Why the devil aren't we moving yet? Let me... It's the wheels, they're spinning around. What do you mean, spinning around? In the air. I'll take a look. You've been at the bottle again, Max. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. saw it with my own eyes, Chief. You are the one that's spinning, fathead. Now let's get out of here and take your head along. There's or have you forgotten how to drive? Car, Chief. Be careful. I'm canning. I said, be careful. Very careful. Mm. What's the matter now? You must be drunk. I can't figure it out. The steering wheel's blocked. Put out the barrel. Where? Oh, the car's steering itself. <laughs> Straight ahead. It don't work. Chief, have a look out your window. The wheel's at an angle. Oh. I'm Just out. a sec, Chief. You can't leave now. We shouldn't ought to forget our money. What the devil are you doing now, Max? Good Lord. The car's going round in circles. Yes, you must be drunk. No, I ain't, Chief. Oh, oh, I never could stand there and go round. Oh, I think I'm going to be sick. Why can't you pull yourself together, Max? There's no need to feel sick in the car. Will it go any faster? I believe it, so. Hey, Jimmy, how about speeding this thing oh. up a bit, huh? With pleasure. We've still got a few more tricks up our sleeves. Doodle will make it all right. My nose! I can't get it off the window! The central fugal force! The shot force of me to stay against the window! <laughs> <laughs> How about letting them get out now? Mm. Very well, but only while they're moving. Don't jump out while they're still in motion! <laughs> no! Help! No! <laughs> <laughs> We can't let him get away with that. Ah, oh, this is terribly depressing. It's suddenly so dark I can't see. Ah. <laughs> Max, no! Oh, look out, you idiot! Hey, where are you, Chief? That stupid hat's always in the way. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Max, turn the light on at once. You oh, just wait till I get out. You can start looking for a new job, Max. I guess the man who was knocked out of my doodles steering wheel was the one who had the money on him, huh? The money must still be in the car. Hey, Jim. Hello. Here it is. The money from the holder. They said it was a 500,000 francs on a TV. Don't we have to give it back? Well, uh, give it back? Sure, but only if they give us a good reward. <laughs> <laughs> you know something, these are gangsters. They wanted the money and the beetle. They'll be back tomorrow. They'll probably fight with Leskovich for the beetle. Are you really putting Dudu up for sale? Dudu? Mm -hmm. Never. But if everyone's dying to have a yellow beetle, then they'll get one. At least one that looks exactly like doo-doo. Ah, now I understand. That's why you asked me to get all that yellow paint. 
Oh, and we mustn't forget that label. Leskovich thought he'd put one over on us, but we're going to put one over on him. Sure, this is the right place? Sure thing, Chief. It's the back entrance to the garage. Since when do we use the back entrance? You see, the boys wanted to see the hole you disappeared into with the hat. Shut up. Hmm. For 100,000 francs, you can have the beetle right away. Right. I'll be back in one hour with the money. You can take your time. I offer 250,000. That's exactly half 500,000. He's bluffing. Where should this imitation Hopalong Cassidy get all that cash from? Isn't that the amount that was stolen the other day in the bank robbery? That is exactly the amount that was found and until now hasn't been returned to its owners. I'm sure you understand that I can't refuse this offer. And if I pay you right away? You mean cash? Well, not exactly. I'll pay you by check. A hundred thousand for my account. You don't seem to have heard. I just said two hundred and fifty thousand. Quite an offer. But for old friendship's sake, we'll make the deal with you. Okay, make out the check. Gentlemen, you've just signed the wrong contract. If you try to steal a beetle again, you'll end up with another black eye. How long do we have to wait? Oh, of course, of course, at once. <coughs> Here you are, 100,000. The way I know you, you'll make a profit on that. But I am the sole owner of that car now. Well, Mr. Leskovich, I see you finally persuaded the owners to sell you the car. <laughs> you see, he told me he wouldn't sell the car to anyone but him. Quite right, Mr. Stutzley. You see, we owed that to Mr. Leskovich. I understand. Oh, uh, before I forget, uh, here is the check for the old timer. Thank you. I'm sure you don't mind a pardon. And where shall we deliver the car? Why don't you bring it to the old timer reunion? Oh, and you can bring the two ladies with you, but please, in costume. It will be a good, good opportunity idea. to inaugurate the car. Now that the magic car belongs to you, Mr. Leskovich, I'd like to ask you if I may have a look at it. Why, of course. Only, uh, this, uh, magic car was a little bit more expensive than we reckoned. I see. And how much more expensive? Oh, around 200,000. Mr. Leskovich, don't you find this a little outrageous? Only just now you paid 100,000 for it. I find it shocking myself. My dear Mr. Stutzley, I am quite certain that you will pay 200,000 for this car. Well, all right. But I want to try out a few tricks first. You'll have to let the beetle out of the back. Let's drive to my place. Uh, there's a lot of room there. Okay with me. Oh, what I wanted to ask you, your doo-doo is unique. There isn't another one. No, no, there certainly isn't another one. Uh -huh. Well, then we'll meet at the reunion. Goodbye now. Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yes, that's what's called a business deal. <laughs> but don't worry, you'll learn. Shouldn't you go to the bank? Bank for what? I thought you wanted to return the money that was stolen from the bank. Or does it still happen to be in the Beetle? Nothing about all the newspapers. The main thing, I've got the checker from Leskovich. But a check can be stopped. I wouldn't trust huh? Leskovich for a minute if I were you. She's right. Mm. Come on. See you later, Jackie. Come on, Jackie. We still have to polish the car. Excuse me, I must tell upon my bank. I'll be right back. Shall we try out one of those tricks? What do you think? Good idea. But do you know what you have to do? I'll just press some button. Something's bound to happen. There. <laughs> or maybe this button. There. Nothing either. <laughs> it's funny because when I watched him, when he pressed this button down there... What's all this? A lot of old wires. But... But they're not connected to anything. Huh? It's just 
A tummy? What? You know what that means, Miss Bingham-Meyer. Mm -mm. That means we have been cheated. <gasps> cheated? That's to say, not us. Let's go, bitch. I'd like to have a check stopped. The number? Just a moment. All right, get out. Good morning, gentlemen. The chief said get out. Maybe you'd be interested in buying the car? You, oh. The money's here, all right, chief. It's under the seat. Okay, lady, oh, up with your legs. What do you think that you're doing? Let go of my legs. It wasn't you here. Shut your face, lady. You're sitting on our money. Wasn't it you who wanted to buy the Beetle for 250,000 francs a little while ago? Not anymore. I've just changed my mind. But why did you do that? I'll let you have the car at once for only 200,000 francs. But I was under the impression that you wanted to sell it to me. Be quiet. Here you are, Chief. It's in a bag. <laughs> why, that's the bag from the hold-up. I saw it on television. You mean the bank hold-up? <gasps> why, then you must be... Uh-uh. I'm only the driver. That's typical. Enchanted. Hurry up. Make it like a bird, Chief. Well, at least they didn't make off of this valuable car. Valuable? <laughs> the car's like you, a dummy. Did you say a dummy? For which you paid a hundred thousand francs. That's quite a sum. Somewhat overpriced, if you don't mind my saying so. They just put one over on the value, Mr. Leskovich. Come, Miss Mingemeyer. This calls for a celebration. <laughs> It couldn't have happened to a nastier man. A dummy? You're a great double-crosser. So you're looking for the lolly too, eh? Lolly? Old newspapers, and I ain't even in them. What have they got to do with me? I want my money. What do you mean by yours? That's our money. But we'll find it all right. Even if we have to take this car apart bit by bit, Mr. Leskovich. Bring him along. As you can well imagine, we're delighted to have the 500,000 francs back again. I will see to it personally that the insurance company pays you the reward as soon as possible. Uh, could you tell us how much it will be? Ten percent. That's to say, 50,000 francs. <laughs> well, frankly, we're relieved that Mr. Leskovich's check was covered. Yeah. Oh? Have you counted the money? Yes, three times, and I got a different figure every time. Oh, and uh, there was something else I wanted to ask. Uh, was the money forwarded to the Hell Driver Club in London? The matter was dealt with, and the money will be paid out today. Uh, very good of you. It's a double cross. But they can't do that to me. Not to me. A double cross, and I haven't even been crossed a single time. And I'll have to pay for this. What about my car? You can put it together again. Maybe you'll be lucky and get two cars. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, Chief. <laughs> Won't be able to drive with this car again. Oh, it's much healthier to walk. Come on, Max. From now on, we're going to get tough. Yeah. Did you get me, Samson? Yeah. <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm looking for Duru. But Duru's over there. Just a minute, this way. But the arrows are pointing at that way. But he's standing over there in the parking lot. No, he's right. over oh. there. Oh, you're right. Hey, hey Jimmy. Uh, do you think that two lovely princesses are going to be mad at us tonight for being so tipsy? Well, we're not married to them. Thank goodness for that. Uh, are you going to tell them that we're going to stay tonight, uh, aren't you? Uh, just a minute. Now, you lost the dice tonight, so you'll have to tell them, right? That's all it was in me. But why not? After all, we've invested over a quarter million Swiss francs tonight, huh? Hey, where's the money? What? Where's the capital? Yeah, don't worry, it's here. Yeah. Don't make so much noise. You think I'd let this out of my sight? Hey, just look at this. Look at this. It can't be true. Look at the car. It can't be true. Hey, where's the parking attendant? Yes. Hey, parking yes. attendant, come over here. What is it? Hey, parking attendant. Now, can you tell me how we're supposed to get our car out <laughs> of here? You've got a problem, but I didn't park the cars uh, there. Well, what are you here for then? To collect. Don't you start to get fresh, now, young man. Now, now, gentlemen, stop quarreling. He who beholds a cool head will live to fight uh, another day. 926X. Uh, 
926X cancel. Hey, you, will you please slap my face? I think I'm dreaming. This has never happened before. Certainly. With pleasure. You'll soon be dreaming, my friend. Aldo? <laughs> but Jimmy, he asked me for favor. Come on, get in. Well, then, park in the next <laughs> time, yeah? <laughs> Ciao. Hey, just a minute. You want to drive in your condition? Uh, what do you mean, this condition? Hold it, Aldo, just a sec. I'm sure the policeman doesn't have any objections if we're driven home, right? Mm, you'd be better off that way. <laughs> Since he's so interested in our condition, we'll do him a favor. As far as my condition is concerned, it's none of your business. It's great. So let's go. And who is going to drive you? Mm. Our <laughs> chauffeur, of course. Mm. Do do drive, but be careful. <laughs> 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 And, and he, he runs, runs, and he, he runs, runs, and he runs, and he runs, and he runs. I think I'm dreaming. Just like me. Do you like me to slap your face? Hmm? <clears throat> well, the flowers have withered. They should have been here by now. I hope nothing happened to them. They were carrying a lot of money. They probably made off with it. I knew I shouldn't have listened to you. But you must admit, they both behaved like perfect gentlemen towards us. We weren't very attractive in our overalls. <sighs> that didn't disturb the last man who worked for us. That's why he was fired. Joe, uh, I've been thinking things over. I don't think we can go on running the business on our own. I think we should sell out. Yes, I've been thinking about it too. Here they are. No, it's not them. Probably just a customer. Go ahead. Start eating in the meantime. I don't want to hear a squeak out of the young lady. Get me? <laughs> Take your filthy hands off. I'd just like to know where your two medical boys are. They wanted to go to the bank. They'll arrive any second. Ah. I just case the joint chief, ain't nobody there. Okay. You'll come along with us, hmm? I? Hmm. What for? Because we like your company. Sure, come on, kid. You heard what the chief said? <laughs> hey, the little life. <laughs> I mean, the life. Did you think somebody's still up? Quiet. Don't make so much noise. Okay, hard. we've arrived. Everybody out. <laughs> The straw must be loosened. Hey, you get out of a car like an old lady. Jimmy! Princess! Oh, there you are at last. We were worried about uh, you. Isn't that sweet? Uh, flowers, Jimmy, quick. Yeah, yeah, flowers. Nearly forgot. They must be here somewhere. All right. Okay, there they are. Okay, right. come over here, quick. Here. God. Well, the princess, here they are. The flower. Wow. Hey, Jimmy. Look, she got legs. Oh, she way. got beautiful legs. I only thought she had a trousers. Well, Where's why has she been keeping them? Hey, have you been drinking? Drink. Certainly not. What makes you think we've been drinking? I think of the flowers and it's. I, I gotta talk to Joe. Where's Joe? Wasn't she outside serving customers? There wasn't no one outside but us the chickens. <laughs> Where's Joe? That's hey, come on out, Joe. I keep on to hear I bells are ringing, Joe. Jimmy. Hey, Old timer garage? <laughs> the ringing yes. is stopped. Did He's you hear any ringing? Jimmy, for you. Coming. Now I know Jimmy what they Jimmy Bondi at your service. <laughs> Hello, that this is Jimmy Bondi. <laughs> You're not very funny. <laughs> Give me Joe at once. I'm not a cannabis member. So maybe the June birds. Yes, okay, I'll come. Not a cannabis June birds either. I'll bring the money. <laughs> One man on guard, no problem. Uh, you want me to finish him off? Oh, no. That's the sort of thing Doodle loves to deal with.
Next, I'll climb up with Dudu. Once up there, we'll deal with the boys. Hey, look, maybe you haven't noticed it, but that wall, she's straight up. Yeah, thanks for the advice. Just a minute, I'm coming with you. Sorry. Two of us are too heavy. And if anything should go wrong, you've got to get us out. All right. down, Dudu. Okay, don't move. Thought you were clever, huh? You're here, Jimmy. But however did you manage to get up? Why, with my beetle. With your what? Psst. Careful, someone's coming. Get back behind the settee. All right, girl, you can get up. Santa Claus is here. Why don't you help her wake up? Mm-hmm. Wake up, kid. He... Hey! Oh! Sounds a bit hollow to me. Stop! 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 Stop!
Hunger. Right here. Say your prayers. Now. Now. No. I'm just starting on you. How about starting here? Turn around. Stop. Stop. Now I know what they mean by shake your leg. And put your best foot forward. Where are we actually? This is where they store theatrical props. Belongs to a theater that's gone broke. We're safe here. Great hideout. Is a bunch in a bag. Say, isn't this a picture of Delilah? Delilah? Who's Samson she? and Delilah. <laughs> That's about his face. Samson always gets it on the head. <laughs> you just wait. I'll show you who's going to get it on the head. Just you wait. Where are you? Can I just listen? Wait, just now. Do I'm not going like to help you, you. Samson. Always Come here, you little rat. Trouble, huh? Oh, well, huh? I'll get my hands on you. Oh, 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 you oh, here I am. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, not the coffin again! Oh, no! May you rest in peace. Hurry up. Hmm. He's bound to be in here someplace. Come on. We'll find him, all right. <clears throat> oh, that was only Samson. All right, continue searching. I'm going to shut up, you! Samson! Max. Hey, get me out of this coffin. You look in this direction. I'll look here. Uh -huh. I'm superstitious. Okay. Uh. Ow! Uh. 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 Hello? Are you looking for me? Oh, it's you, Max. What'd you give me a shot like that for? That's the second time I've been in there, Chief. But I'm telling you, I ain't going in there again tonight. You're not in that trouble. I ain't going in there a third time. Uh, I'm superstitious. Come on. Ah! Gotcha! Oh. Oh. oh, it's you again. What am I doing all the work around here? Max! Coming. I won't go in there a third time, Chief. I'm superstitious. Third time lucky, they say. Do you know where they're hiding? No! I was in a coffin! Oh! Ah! Oh no! Oh, I can't get the lid off! I knew it was unlucky to fall in a coffin! Max! Go. Come out of there! At once! Max! You can't leave me here on my own!
back to the boss and let me get it. No, they've had enough of us. By the way, do you know where Joe is? Joe. Joe! Yeah, I'm here. Where are you? Here I am. Well, we didn't do so badly. Hmm? We showed him, didn't we? Huh? Yes, you're quite right. We couldn't have made it without you. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, you ready? Of course. I'm waiting for you. Come on. Hey, Jimmy, I'm looking for my jacket. Have you seen it? It's in the car. <laughs> oh, yeah. How it got in there. Come to your Aldo, my little jacket. Hey, Aldo, what's the idea of this? What? I don't see anything. Your shirt, Taylor. Do you want to wave it at the reunion? <laughs> Can't even get dressed alone. Just like a baby. Uh, before you criticize others, look at yourself. Are we going riding or are we going to a car reunion? You think of what you're wearing fits the occasion? It was the only thing that was available. <laughs> and that piece of canvas you wear? Is that supposed to be a hat? Nothing against my hat, please. You can't wear that hat. Aldo, leave my hat alone. If Joe sees you in that hat, you... Oh! If you want to fight, it's all right. But we got to do it old style, understand? Right. <laughs> you got to reach out. <laughs> you can't touch me. Oh! Just a minute. That wasn't a fair. You normally hit it with a right. Santa Madonna. Isn't that something? Ain't it hat? You got that hat at once. I can't go without it. Take it a show for the hat. Do you like it, Chief? Yes. <laughs> Are we going in doo-doo? In doo-doo? In this costume? No. Anyway, I believe he's got other plans. I think he's in love with your Aphrodite. I find for a lover, he's standing much too far away. If I know him, he's probably waiting for us to leave. Doo-doo will make it all right. Could it be? What'd I tell you? Dude will make it all right. 